Hello everyone, I'm Terry Duke and welcome to my channel. About a year ago, I made a comprehensive comparison of Mountain Blade Warband and its successor, Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord, with the idea of seeing how the series evolved and whether one game is better than the other. I came to the conclusion that base Bannerlord was largely better in almost every way, from the graphics to the combat to the features, while Warband mods were still far, far ahead of Bannerlord in terms of size, ambition and variety. But at this point, Bannerlord has been out for about 4 years and new banner mods are coming out every day. So I thought it would be interesting to play the two games against each other once again, but specifically from the perspective of modding. Before we get into it though, a quick word from the sponsor. This video is brought to you by me! <laughs> That's right, I make a lot of modding content on my channel for both Warband and Battlelords, so wherever you come from, I've got content for you and you should definitely subscribe to not miss out on any of it. Thank you very much, now let's get on with it. When it comes to Mountain Blade mods, I think we can split them into two main categories, some mods and total conversions. Some mods are typically small mods meant to change some aspects of the game, but not in any significant ways. This can be a mod that adds new banners, for example, or turns arrows into fire arrows for a visual appeal. It's by adding a lot of some mods together that you end up changing the base game quite a lot. Total conversions, on the other hand, are about taking the entire game and putting it either in a different time period or a different world altogether, often with new factions, new items, new music, and new features as well. Total conversions can easily be split into many categories of their own, such as historical mods or fantasy mods. So as part of this video, I'll be going over notable mods in each category from Warband before showcasing what Bannerlord offers in those same categories, starting with submods. Generally, there aren't many some mods in Warband. A few examples include Freelancer, Diplomacy, and PBOD. Freelancer is a simple some mod that allows you to join any lord in the world as a soldier. As such, you would follow the lord around and take part in whatever battle they end up in. Diplomacy is a some mod that adds more staff to your kingdom along with more options for kingdom management. So you could get an accountant to manage your finances, you could get a constable to automatically recruit and upgrade troops and garrisons, and a chancellor to change the domestic policies. And finally, pre-battle Orders and Deployments is a mod that gives you more tactical options in battle, such as the ability to start the battle with several orders for all of your troops to execute right away. The issue though is that none of these were mods meant to be added to Warband individually, but rather they were features that modders could add to their own total conversions if they wanted to. You see, the thing about Warband mods is that by design they are meant to be self-contained. Each mod is its own folder with its own files, and in the game launcher you would select the module and that's it. If you enjoy the features of two different mods, you you couldn't play both mods at the same time, it's one or the other. In this context, the only way to add some mods to other mods is by doing it manually within the files themselves, for which you would need to know what you're doing. Instead, the main way to play some mods for most people is by finding a bigger mod that happens to include a lot of some mods in them. And to be clear, if you wanted to play Warband with only some mods, there are several mods that do just that. Notably, there's Native New Design, Banner Page, Floris Evolved, and Diplomacy Let Dumb Reloaded. All of these mods retain the native setting and factions of Calradia, but they also added many some mods to make the game more interesting, and it's up to you to pick your preferred mod based on the features they offer. So overall, Warband both has a lot of some mods, but very few options to customize them yourself. Bannerlord, on the other hand, is a lot better in the department. For starters, some mods make the bulk of Bannerlord mods right now, and most of them are just better than what Warband some mods did. So Freelancer, currently the Bannerlord alternative is Serve as Soldier, which does the the exact same thing, but there's also a whole other bunch of settings and features on top of it. Diplomacy? Bannerlord has another mod called Diplomacy, which specifically targets kingdom relations and treaties, but there's also the mod called Improved Garrisons, which does a lot of what the Diplomacy sum mod for Warband did, but much more efficiently. As for pre-battle orders and deployments, well, there's already a similar feature in base Bannerlord before battles, so it's not necessary. But if you go on my channel, you see there's tons of other sum mods for Bannerlord that really add to the experience, from the realistic battle mod that deeply changes the combat mechanics, or mods that add more bandits, or new weapons and armors to the game, there's just a ton of some mods. But what really makes Bannerlord better is that it's possible through its launcher of launching multiple mods at the same time rather than only being able to pick one. Meaning that instead of only being able to play whatever some mod the modders choose to put in their total conversion, you can add them separately yourself with ease. Now that's highly theoretical of course, in practice different mods could still clash together and cause other issues, but at the very least it is a possibility in Bannerlord where it was a lot more complicated with Warband. Of course these are just some mods, but for a lot of people that's all they want and Bannerlord here does pretty well. But now it's time for total conversions, and there's a lot to talk about here, so let's start with historical mods. Here when it comes to Warband, there isn't a whole lot to say other than we have, well, everything. 
I made a dedicated video for historical mods, and this video features 22 total conversions, all of them with an accurate map and relatively accurate weapons and armors for the time and culture that they portray. Whichever time period you want in Warband, not only is it very likely that there is a mod for that time period, it's also possible that there are several. So if you wanted to play a mod in the Roman Empire, for example, I can count at least four total conversions. The Crusades alone have at least three solid total conversions to choose from. If you wanted to play as a samurai in feudal Japan, Gekko Kujo is the go-to mod. If you wanted to play in the Gunpowder era, both legs and between empires are centered in Europe and are very immersive. So what mods does Bannerlord have in that department? For the ancient period like the Roman Empire, the current go-to mod is Eagle Rising. This mod takes us to Caloradia, but during the Roman Empire. Now yes, it's not technically historical, but there's a quick fix for that, because recently a modder on Nexus released a fully detailed map of Europe for other modders to use. And if you install it, Eagle Rising also released a patch to transfer the mod to Europe, making Eagle Rising a full-on total conversion. As you can see, we have the Roman Empire split across three main provinces, Italy, France, and Spain, while the Celts live in the UK, the Carthaginians in North Africa, and the Byzantine Empire in the East. So once you get the patch for Europe, the mod is, in a lot of ways, complete. Going through the items, you can easily immerse yourself in any culture of your choosing, and it's just gorgeous. In my playthrough, I ended up going as a Celtic Briton and rose up against the Romans in Gaul. And I mean, come on, it doesn't get better than this. Overall, I'd say Gaul Rising is more than a match for most Roman mods coming from Warband. It lacks a lot of extra features, but again, those are separate sum mods that anyone can install on top of Eagle Rising if they want to. As such, I believe Bannerlord has a pretty solid option for this time period. When it comes to medieval mods, Bannerlord currently has two main mods, Europe 1100 and Anno Domini 1259. Europe 1100, as a total conversion, works okay. It uses the same map of Europe and does recreate all the factions of the time period with different troop trees, but on its own, it doesn't really bring any unique items such as weapon and armors. It's still largely base game items. If you want the items that match Europe 1100, you have to download a whole bunch of other sum mods, many of them fairly heavy, like the Expanded Armory mod at 8GB, which is just massive for a sum mod. But once you've figured it out and downloaded everything, the mod works fairly well, minus a few bugs. For example, some elite troops don't wear body armor. This could be an issue on my side, but it's not consistent. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But if you can look past that, Europe 1100 does exactly what it intends to do. In terms of Europe in that time period, we got the factions, we got the lords, and with the sum mods, we got everything else. My only main criticism is I wish it was a more self-contained mod like Eagle Rising or any other total conversion on Warband really. Having to download multiple mods for a single total conversion to work can get very confusing. The same goes for Anno Domini 1259, except not only does this mod have a lot of dependencies, it's also not currently compatible with the latest version of the game, meaning to play it, you'd have to change the game version, which means partly reinstalling the game, meaning a bunch of potential other issues, and given it's the same as Europe 1100 but like 100 years later, I think I'll just wait for an update. I did mention Geku Kujo for Warband as the go-to Feudal Japan mod, and for that Bannerlord's answer is the yet-to-be-released Shokuho. This mod has been teased for a long time now, they released another trailer just last month, which showcased a bunch of new features, including potential sea battles. This is definitely going to be an amazing mod. However, the team behind Shokuho has a very clear goal in mind, which is to release a self-contained, complete mod on launch day. So there's no clue when it'll release, but with a new trailer, it's getting close. In terms of gunpowder mods, Bannerlord doesn't have much yet. The closest thing is a mod called Napoleonic Warfare, which is pretty similar to Eagle Rising in that it still takes place in Calradia, but merely changes the items. So armors are replaced by uniforms, swords by muskets. And the Calradian Empire is basically the French Empire, and the other factions are replaced by the Russians, the Austrians, and the British. And once again, the difference graphics make, man. Damn, it's beautiful. Not only that, but the rolling animations are amazing. They even got the sound effects too. In battle, the firing line works as well as you'd expect, although the smoke is really thick, so it doesn't take long before you can't see anything. But in terms of mechanics, it's right up there with the best Warband mods. And then the visuals just outdo Warband with ease. All this mod really needs, much like Eagle Rising, is a patch to be ported to the European map, and already it would be like 50% finished. The only thing missing would be the new scenery and the addition of artillery. As it stands, the mod works with the latest version of Bannerlord, it is self-contained, and doesn't have any bugs that I noticed. That said, the mod is open source, so modders can just take everything from it to make their own gun mods in the future, no problem. So we'll see what happens.
But alright, now let's talk fantasy mods. Similarly to historical mods, Warband has plenty of them ranging from made-up fantasy worlds to amazing adaptations of previous works. There are so many it's ridiculous, but to name a few, Warsaw Conquest is the Warhammer fantasy adaptation on Warband, and covers all of the factions from the Empire to Chaos, Demons, Dwarves, Orcs, Lizards and the Undead, everything. It also has a bunch of spells, though they're fairly limited. There's other adaptations, of course, like The Last Days of the Third Age, which covers Lord of the Rings, and The World of Ice and Fire and Clash of Kings for a Game of Thrones. And then there's mods like Paris Now, which came out with their own fantasy world and lore, and has pretty much been my favorite mod for Warband. Hell, if science fiction counts as fantasy, Warband also has a Star Wars mod. Again, I made a dedicated video to fantasy mods in Warband, which you can check out. For Bannerlord, there's very few options, but they're very promising. Bannerlord's main adaptation for Game of Thrones right now is Realm of Thrones. The world of Westeros and Essos are largely done on the world map, but besides the Iron Throne, there's few new scenery. We have yet to see the wall. However, the characters from the show and books are still there, and getting to interact with them is pretty cool. Then of course there's ice zombies and walkers and giants, which is awesome. And the damn dragon is just overpowered. The mod still has more development needed, of course, but it is currently playable and largely self-contained, which is neat. Overall, when you compare it to Warband mods, it's right up there. The only things that the Warband mods have that this one doesn't is mostly unique quests and all the scenery. But when you think of the combat itself and everything else, the Bannerlord version is just so much better. Similarly, Bannerlord's adaptation of Warhammer comes in the form of The Old Realms, which, even though far from finished, is so amazing that I declared it the moment Bannerlord outdid Warband months ago, a position I still hold. I mean, huge world map, beautiful items and scenery, the addition of guns, the first introduction to non-human species like vampires and skeletons, and spells so destructive and amazing, it just tops anything Warband modders could ever hope of creating with the limited resources of Warband. And a class system for your character, I mean, come on. It doesn't cover nearly as much of the world of Warhammer as Warsaw Conquest at the moment, but what it does cover, it takes full advantage of Bannerlord's advanced features and is bound to be one of the best mods in modding history when it's done. Other fantasy mods are coming, but who knows when. Kingdom of Arda is the mod for Lord of the Rings at the moment, and I think they aim to release it fully finished like Shakuho. It is still in active development though, as two weeks ago they shared the Helm's Deep map on ModDB, so looking forward to it. As for Star Wars, well, <laughs> there is a mod called Separatist Crisis, but it hasn't been updated in a while, and most people currently report that it's not working, so hopefully we'll get an update soon. Another mod coming to Bannerlord is Perisno. The Perisno team has been teasing for a while that Perisno is coming to Bannerlord as well, but they were not planning on getting started on Bannerlord until the game released officially. On their Discord, they're currently sharing previews of Bannerlord assets, which is pretty cool, but it also means they're just getting started. And they also indicated that another version of the Warbed mod is being released soon, so all in all, a Perisno mod is coming to Bannerlord, but not for a while. And then there's story-driven mods, but there's no contest at all. Between The Last Days of the Third Age, which literally has you play through the story of The Lord of the Rings, a full-on adaptation of the Berserk manga, and a bunch of others, Warband has several story-driven mods for people who are less interested in a sandbox game. Again, made a video for that. The only Bannerlord mod to fit that description that I found is Land of Sika, which I played over a year and a half ago, and it did have potential, but it never received another update, so chances are, it's dead. And there we have it. Overall, Warband is still miles ahead in terms of variety and quantity, but with every new mod, Bannerlord players get more options, many of which make Warband look really old in comparison. I think it's also fair to say at this point, but Bannerlord will simply never have as many mods as Warband. Just think of the sheer amount of work that goes into each mod. For reference, Warband is about 1.2 GB in size, and the biggest mods often come close, if not exceeds that size a little bit. But Bannerlord total conversions can easily weigh 10 gigabytes. That's all the textures and items at a much higher quality. You can put so many details into every single scene and item that they can all take way more time to design. But at the same time, do we really need four different Roman mods? If we have the items, the scenery, and the map, and players have the freedom to choose whatever some mods they want to add on top of it, maybe a single Roman mod is all we need. And as it stands, it exists, and it is playable, and it does look way cooler than any of the Roman mods on Warband. Similarly, when the Old Realms is finished, will we really need a whole other bunch of fantasy mods, or will this one be so massive and complete that it will be all that everyone needs? All this to say, don't let the small number of total conversions on Bannerlord deceive you. What Bannerlord lacks in quantity and variety, it makes up for in quality. Mods have become a lot more prevalent on Bannerlord, and it's as good a time as I need to try them out, and it's only going to get better. Obviously, for any setting that is not yet represented in Bannerlord, and god knows there are still many, Warband will always be a strong, reliable alternative with strong mods of its own. 
And that's about it for today. So thanks for watching everyone, and remember to like and subscribe, and check out the rest of my channel for tons of recommendations for both games. And let me know in the comments of any mods I might have missed. But anyway, thanks again, and I'll see you next time.